Hello and welcome to another one of these RSF1 hot laps. This time we're at the Russian Grand Prix track. A flowing circuit, uh, tyre wear not really a big issue around here, so it can be uh, quite kind of a normal track, although overtaking is very, very easy to do. So it can be quite entertaining if you're watching or doing a race as well. Back in the Mercedes once again, and hopefully this time I can set a valid lap on my second lap. Um, unlike Singapore. So let's head out onto the track. Again, this track has changed from last game to this one. On this on this game, the curbs, as you can see, the orange curbs, are very lethal. You do not want to hit these very hard, unlike on the last game, you could use them. But on this on this game, on this track, this can be Again, they can be quite lethal and you might see me hit them a few times on my second lap. Anyway, any down through turn one, completely flat out, but can actually cause chaos on the first lap. We're down into turn two and three into the braking zone. Third gear, trying to keep the car, as you can see, bounced over that orange curb. Trying to keep the car stable through there. Then turn four is this long, never-ending left-hander. Keep the car as left as possible. Then open up this next... 90 degree right hand, you can run the car a little bit to the left if you want, obviously not too much. Third gear for this next 90 degree right hand, again you can run the car a little bit to the wide over the curb. That up through here, then down in the fifth gear, turn the car in. Car may want to uh, slide sideways, then this double apex left hander. And then 90 degree right, there's no corner names around here, which is annoying. Hey ho. Uh, then on to this straight where overtaking can be quite easy to do, but also can be quite dangerous, especially in this braking zone down into the chicane as you're going left and then, then right. And the car wants to run out a little bit wide. Now, this chicane can be very, very tricky because you're going uphill, but you're trying to go through third gear and then fourth on the exit. And then these last two corners, mostly 90 degree right hand, right and left hand is around this track. But the last two are quite... Um, the last corner you can kind of go in there quite fast, or faster than usual. Because, especially if you're on a last lap of qualifying, because the exit won't matter. But if you're in a race and you're trying to set up an overtake, obviously you get that exit perfectly right. So, let's see how I get on with this lap again. I wouldn't be surprised if I mess this up in some form. Let's see how I get on. There we go. Decent lap. 31 5 1 1. Probably a few more attempts in that. But as you can see, especially with the curves on a few of those corners there, 
um, and the orange curbs do unsettle the car quite hefty. Half second down on my uh, Brundle time. So yeah, there's a few more attempts in that, but hopefully that was good setup. Two seven arrow. Um, you need it for the straight, but the seven on the rear stables the car uh, through the corners. Especially in the middle sector, 50, 55 transmission. Tension geometry, minus 2.6, minus 1.0, 0 0.05, 0 0.20. Suspension, 210, 9923. Brakes, 100% 50, but uh, personal preference as always. And then tire pressures, um, all the way to the left with the top two, 21.4, 21.4. That's one click, one click up from the left. Um, yeah, again, can maybe move these to the right a little bit more because again, the tire wear around Russia is not, it's not really a thing. So can up them a little bit more if you want, but again, experiment with these cause these are still, you know, it's not, um, finalize what's the most ideal pressures yet, but, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Next track is going to be Japanese track, <laughs> one of my least favorite on the calendar. So that's going to go well, um, but hopefully it should be all right. But hopefully you got some advice on um, as a help on that track. Uh, but yeah, see you next time for the Japanese track.